James Ferreira, a designer from Mumbai for the past 45 years. Started working about 45 years ago, which was a struggle for me because my father refused to have a tailor as a son. So I have been earning my own money. I passed school and to my father's horror, instead of doing JJ's, I mean, instead of doing uh, science or commercial or whatever the hell those uh, graduation courses are, I decided to go to JJ School of Art and learn drawing and I did the foundation course and simultaneously I learned cutting. So that was the beginning 45 years ago. I then worked with a very old boutique called Purple Pussycat in Kolaba. And there, with the help of Saloni Roy Kapoor, I got a job with Orkays Textiles, where I was working for a company called Genesis of London, designing export uh, clothes for the European market. And from there, I jumped from export to retail and back to export. And I have been doing this for the past, after that, for about 15 years. Then I went to London to work with Zandra Rhodes. I went to Paris to work with Reni Terry. I worked with Cottage Industries of India. I worked with Handicraft and Handloom Export Cooperation. And unfortunately, most of the work I've done was before the fashion industry was even formed. So, most of my work is uncharted. My mother was one of the most elegant ladies ever. Uh, she was totally a fashion icon. And I spent my weekly school holiday was a Thursday. So every Thursday I would do my mother's shopping with her. So I have been with my mom and we've always had tailors upstairs in the second kitchen instead of a kitchen. It's been, it was turned into a tailoring sort of uh, workshop with this Gujarati tailor called Mohan. And so that is when I really started to work as a designer and design clothes for my sisters, for my mom, for my neighbors. And then after taking a sabbatical because I got bored of design, I realized I always did cut my own clothes. But as I grew bigger and bigger, you stop doing everything yourself and you dedicate. And then I worked on an organic program and where I worked with farmers and with uh, architects and I realized the importance of using our own hands and our own skills and so that's when I started cutting again and that's when I really feel that I began to grow as a designer. When Kishore Bajaj, the, the owner of Badasab, gave me the assignment to doing the chain hands, we were wondering how to do metal casting at that time. And Kishore decided that the best way we could do it was with the drain covers, with the holes in it. So we came, I went to Lohar Chores and I bought these tiny big drain covers. and. We then got them curved a bit and then we joined them together to form a hand which was flexible. For me, the sari has always been the most elegant outfit of the Indians. The sari has evolved and there are 108 ways of wearing it. So I always wanted to do different things with this, the sari, and then when I was teaching in Sapphire College, we started experimenting with these things, and we decided to come up with different ways of of of, of making the sari, and I decided it would be really interesting to do the double pallu or to to. 
to, to put kadis into the palu, to expand the palu in certain ways, to make it bigger so it looks more beautiful. And then I started experimenting with one piece cutting. Because I think it is, it is a homage in taking the Indian draping to its next level. I feel today in colleges there is really no emphasis done on cutting. And today what happens in all these colleges is that if you say, oh, I want you to Indianize the course, they will send them to a weaving facility or a dyeing facility, which is more surface embellishment and the work of a textile design. You know when I first started, when I first saw a blouse which is of the design of in the embroidery technique Havame, I was I was really, really fascinated by it. Havame is when you do the embroidery on a nylon net, which is then pulled out to just leave the embroidery there and remove the background fabric. And it is then, I think it was in 2006 that I started experimenting with this and started doing different things out of this. And the met metallic border, metallic fabric or the metallic blouses which I made came out of using the kasam. And then in the end putting the fabric out of under it so that you got that meshy look. So these are all different things I've experimented all over the years. Sustainable fashion is something I think as Indians we've always done because we've always done things like recycle. And when it comes to sustainable fashion, I think I've always thought of it and felt like that because for me, I try to use in all my designs, there's very little wastage. I try to keep wastage down to the minimum. Secondly, I use very good fabrics. I've been Recently, after the past few years, I may have used a lot of viscose because I think it's a breathable fabric. But I still prefer silk and I still prefer cotton and I love that. And you use good clothes, you cut classic styles and that is sustainable fashion. We need to stop buying the cheap t-shirts, we need to stop buying the trash. We need to start buying beautifully cut, beautifully made clothes which will last for us forever. And I think that is the beginning of it. I just put throw fabric on the ground. I mean, I mean you're taught to learn, you're taught to have your fabric down the selvage, etc. etc. I just cut a hole anywhere in the fabric and then I see what I have to do with the rest of it. It's all about in the end molding the fabric to a, to a shape which is very good. And I think that is the beauty of having to work the way I do without having to, to really, really think of am I making money or am I not because I've never made money and I've never really been in this business to do that. I've been in this business to learn and to grow. And I think I really haven't you reached half my potential yet. You know, I was, I think, the first person to wear dhotis in India as a part of fashion. I started in the 80s, I would wear the dhoti with bomber jackets, I would wear the lungis slit right up to my, my waist with neck stockings and boots. But then I would always take Indian and blend it with the Western to, to create a look which I think which was my own at that time. And I suppose being one of a family of eight, I was always fighting for attention, you know. And then I became, once I met my friends, my gay friends in the late 70s, early 80s, and we started partying together. When I mean, six to ten really outrageous people get together, I mean, you then, I think then things just got a bit out of hand, and we became truly whacked in the way we dressed, and we experimented to, to compete with each other, and we really did have fun. I mean, and then after that, 
I have come to this phase of my life again where I am using Indian clothes, but this time I am using Indian clothes to look elegant and sophisticated. You know, and then I realized that what I started at that time, I have just been perfecting things. Even today when I design, I realize that I am redesigning something which I have done 20 or 30 years ago, but I have been making it more relevant today. I'm cleaning it up and making it into something which I feel then becomes classical of my style, a classic of my own style and that is what today I am. Today I use my whole library of styles and, and garments which I used and cut in the past but I'm taking them, making them modern, making them contemporary cleaning that up and adding the experience I have gained 45 years in this industry to be able to create today something which I think is truly mine and truly Indian. My else, my sister, my mom, my eight clothes for everyone to me, including myself. I don't know, I felt that as a designer I should inspire people to be able to come to me with, as a designer with the way I am. Maybe I scared people with my outrageousness at that time. But I don't know, I'm forever having, having fun doing what I want and pushing boundaries. I feel that the way the fashion industry operates today has got nothing to do with talent but only everything to do with legacism. Firstly, I feel that the FTCI should really not be a body of designers. The Fashion Council of India should be people from different industries related to the fashion industry. They should be people from the textile industry, people from the accessory, that's the leather industry, the jewelry industry. All of these people should have got together to create the fashion in the Fashion Council of India. Today, we have a group of 10 powerful designers who create and who dictate who will be the next finale. And I think the Fashion Council of India has not done their job of being the Fashion Council of India. We still do not have a size chart, which I think NIT started three years ago but has given it up. Embroidery is something which is going to be disappearing really fast because none of our embroidery people want their children to be embroidery men. We do not give dignity to our, our workers. We are not doing anything for them. I think if we could go back to the past, go back to using the hands which we have all over our country, we are an overpopulated country, so we need to train these hands, but nothing is being done.